welcome everybody to this session. I am from the Dominican Republic and I study here in and um, I am a student at one of the Yalas here in Nicaragua. And today Today we're going to speak about the Yalas in Latin America, the training, the agroecology training that is provided for young people. Today we're going to hear about the process of building, of setting up the Yalas as agroecological schools in Latin America. We're going to be speaking about the training that is provided there. And for this, we will be hearing from our academic director, Madeleine Sanchez, so, welcome to Marlene. Greetings, thank you. Gre thank you for the thank you to the organizers who are providing us with this opportunity to speak today. For us today, it's a great honor to be able to share this experience that we have organized across Latin America from Clock Via Campesina. As Blanca was saying just now, I am in charge of the academic director, the, the, the academic side, and um, I myself studied in the Paulo Freire Institute in Venezuela. So, Let's tell you more about the YALAS, so the Agroecological Institutes in Latin America. In order to tell you about them, we should really go back and talk about the history of Clock Via Campesina defending uh, peasant agroecology in the face of the advance of capitalism and neoliberal policies, which directly affect, affect local production and which also affect farmers. For 30 years, our social movement, the Via Campesina, has spoken about the very important role that peasant farmers play in local food production around the world. In addition to this, we've also spoken about the uh, incredible contribution that it makes to caring for the planet Earth, caring for Mother Nature. The peoples are able to protect their and protect and conserve their ancestral methods. We as Via Campesina in it have worked collectively setting up struggles, plans, strategies, action plans, all of this to strengthen the grassroots organizations in the five continents uh, where we are present. And in addition to that, we also carry out advocacy and lobbying at international institutions asking for change, calling for structural changes which allow us to give true value and visibility to agroecology and peasant farming, which represents 80% of the food in the world. I hope I'm not speaking too fast, says Marlene. Please let me know if I'm going a bit too fast. So we have we put together a strategy and we have a struggle. We what some of our key struggles have been integral and holistic agrarian reform. And this is to ensure that peasant farmers can live in dignity so that they can live on the land, have their own land, have access to land. And that's why we have said that this is one of our key um banners it's one of our key mottos and so also sovereignty uh, farmers should be able to choose what they produce how they produce it when they produce it and it is so food sovereignty is incredibly important and, and food security so we fight for food sovereignty and food security 
and access to the commons, access to water is necessary for this. Also, having access to territories, to, to the land itself, having access to forests. Another key motto is that we speak about defending agriculture with peasant farmers, thanks to peasant farmers, peasant farmers who produce food for the people and not for the market. So they also, also native seeds is another key issue that another key motto for us. So next slide, please. And the strategies that we have been developing have included training as a key element, training, education, capacity building for our activists um, with a large variety of different schools that have that are focusing on leadership to focusing on mobilizing the different sectors of society and also fostering and encouraging new models of production such as new or old models of production such as agroecology and this is a great challenge of course why is it a great challenge well uh, universities in latin america even at this time are part of neoliberalism universities push neoliberalism and they use it as a tool for training people uh, so that they can serve the multinationals so that they can serve the multinationals that dominate the food system so conventional universities are focused on training um for neoliberalism but we but and peasant farmers often don't have access to uh, conventional education it's only the dominant class that has access therefore we observe that there is a need to develop our own schools our own institutes so we in via campesina clock we said that we need a latin american center for agroecological training for peasant farmers that are carrying out agroecology that are feeding the peoples of the world therefore we said that we would set up this university this school this space and we said that it would use popular education so holistic integral education which helps us to um, train future leaders and it also helps us to carry out advocacy advocacy for changes to latin american politics when commander hugo chavez came into power in venezuela we saw that he shared this vision of having these training spaces for peasant farmers for sons and daughters of peasant farmers uh, with our social movement and that is why hugo chavez is was, was a man who motivated us he helped us enormously he gave us the opportunity to open the first yala in latin america that was when the paulo freire yala was set up in venezuela in 2006 and here you can see the founding of it the first yala so it was thanks to support from commander hugo chavez and the work carried out by clock via campesina we all saw the importance of opening a yala we thought of opening a space for young people we also thought through the methodology the ways in which we could provide training the ways in which we could um give uh or bring this into being so next slide please so what are yellows they are for us a space of political training professional training in the field of agroecology with the objective of training young people from uh, indigenous afro-descendant peasant social movements from the grassroots uh, via campesina organizations in latin america and the caribbean 
And so we don't just train professionals, but really we're training activists, people who promote agroecology. So we had this experience, the Paulo Freire Institute, and from that point on, we started a number of processes in Latin America, and now we have nine schools, nine yalas, nine institutes, and there's the Paulo Freire one, which was the first, the founding school, and then we have yalas in Chile, in Paraguay, in Argentina, in Colombia, in Nicaragua. And there's one in Brazil as well. And so the training is uh, focusing on developing processes for peasant feminism, popular feminism. We also have, we talk about organization. We have the ideological and political side as well to help us to understand the current situation that that peasant farmers live in and the struggle to uh, tackle capitalism and to oppose the neoliberal policies that we have in place. And then we also work on agroecological peasant production, the actual methods themselves uh, in the territories. In these yalas, we also have pedagogical teaching principles, ideological principles. So we have internationalism, for example, which means that one seeks to understand the struggles of our country, but not just that, all of the struggles that are taking place in Latin America and around the world. Another key principle in Yalas is that we do work in the field. We do field work and we see work as a liberating element, not a burden. And then we have the praxis itself. The the so we have the theoretical side, but then actually learning the hands-on work in the fields, the practical work, and then organizing. Uh, that's key for democratic principles. So we speak uh, about organizing, organizing ourselves as young people, and also discussing the steps forward that are made internally in the school. Next slide, please. So these pedagogical principles, these ethical and philosophical principles are fundamental. So we speak about education for, in order to achieve social transformation. So uh, working for education, education for work. And as a Yalas, we speak about education based on humanist human humanist values and uh, socialist values and so uh, also focusing on rebellion and also focusing on integration the pedagogy and the yala that we promote it is face to face lessons and also time in the community so the face-to-face -face classes, that's the time in the school itself. So it's discussions with the teachers. We carry out tasks. We speak about technical knowledge. But in addition to that, we also have time in the communities themselves. So that's when people go out, they visit the communities, they stay in the communities, and they put into practice what they have learned. Next slide, please. So here we have a few photos of uh, us in the school and next slide. And we also have work in the communities. So here you can see the work being done by the students in the community. Next slide. So a few things that we want to share with you, the, the different experiences that we have in Latin America. So we've got the school in Brazil, 
the Agroecological Institute in Brazil, and they have uh, graduates that came that came out, and we also got, got um, degrees as engineers in Paulo Freire in the Paulo Freire Institute in Venezuela, and then we have. We have uh, agroecological technicians. We also are working on developing more informal structures. So these are different experiences that we have, but always with the same principles, the same principles and same working methodology. So I don't know how I'm doing for time, but um, we were so we say that uh, farming problems cannot just be solved in technical, purely technical, with purely technical methods. We need a multi and transdisciplinary approaches, which include traditional knowledge systems. And we've also spoke. We also speak a lot about the participation of local actors, so that we can have an endogenous development model flourishing. We also seek to carry out advocacy awareness raising so that we can understand the political and economical context and background and we also carry out work which is sustainable and we focus on food sovereignty on the ground okay so i think i can leave it there for that presentation so now i'll hand back so that we can hear from the others thank you Thank you very much, Marlene. Thank you for speaking about the history of Yellas. So, Clock Via Campesina, the coordination group for Via Campesina in Latin America, we see agroecology as the only relevant and viable alternative which is ethically feasible for achieving food sovereignty. We unite our efforts, our strengths, we bring together the capacities of everybody, and we uh, use um, popular education methods. So now we're going to hear from the graduates, one of the graduates of the first uh, the first um, class of um, of here of the Yala here in Nicaragua. So over to him. Thank you, thank you very much, Blanca. So, we have found that this has been marvelous because we have been able to contribute, we've been able to understand, we've been able to uh, to talk about issues such as climate change and how agroecology can help. It's a new issue for many people, but in the Dominican Republic and in many other places, we have been implementing agroecology using the knowledge that we have learned at the Yala in Nicaragua. So our experience, the graduates, well, it was magnificent. It was an experience that no other school, no other university would provide you with. They wouldn't give you the opportunity for you to actually that do the hands-on work and see it and understand it yourself. Here in the Dominican Republic, since we arrived, since we came back to the country, we have been focusing on agroecological projects with more than 50 peasant farmers, helping them and helping them really to ensure that their land, their vegetable patch, their small farm it can become agroecological. So this has been a transition that we have been pushing and we're seeing the fruits of this. We're seeing the fruits of this and it's all thanks to the school where we studied the Yala that we attended because, well, as many of us who go to the school, who went to the school, we were peasant farmers already. We did know agroecology, but uh, in different terms. We understood it in a different way. So we had proper explanations about what agroecology is, but not just agroecology and how it works. In addition to agro 
agroecology, we are also activists of our organization. So it's not just the agroecology that we learned about. We also learned about the political context, the day-to-day -day situation in many different countries. And we do, we have dialogue. We try to find solutions. We try to find ways of solving this, solving the situation around the world. And we had, uh, we as, as the Caribbean, we were able to adapt in quickly to each other because we all had the same objective. We all went there with the same aim. We all wanted to learn. and We wanted to replicate agroecology in our own countries upon returning home. Another huge opportunity that we have from the Yalas is that young people are able to learn but they learn from others. They learn from teachers, but they also learn from their companions, uh, the others, the fellow students. We are able to learn from each other. We are all from different organizations that belong to Via Campesina, so we come with that uh, banner of struggle, with the Via Campesina banner of struggle. And so we then went back to our homes, our own countries, and as Marlene Sanchez, our teacher, has just said that we spend time in communities at the Yala. So we know what to do when we go back home to start a new process in our own country. So in Dominican Republic, we have worked on several different projects supporting peasant farmers. And the joy that you see, the happiness that you see in the families when you sow an, an agroecological vegetable patch or when their farm becomes agroecological is enormous. We have done all the right measures. We have brought in the right changes so as to free them from the agrochemical products that they were using. We have been replacing those chemicals and giving them other methods. So now they no longer depend on uh, agrotoxics. They don't rely on agrochemicals. They can now work the land in a healthy manner. They can have all of their animals, their vegetables, all of their production together, and uh, doing it in a responsible and safe way. And so we have over 50 producers here in the, the Dominican Republic who are now trained. They know what agroecology is, the methodology that we're using it in here, well, in the Dominican Republic, it has allowed people to learn. So this is something that young people who leave the uh, Yala, they carry this banner of struggle. They, they carry this banner forward and they ensure that the agroecology is known around the world. It ensures that people understand the Yalas. They are able to understand what it is being promoted. So in we would hope that in every country in the world there is a yalla that can be created and this way all countries around the world can understand agroecological production they can understand the education that is provided and they shouldn't have to rely on companies they shouldn't have to rely on agrotoxics they shouldn't have to rely on conventional universities which supposedly do um, promote ag agroecology but then when you look at it in detail, you see it's not true. You see that it's all technological. And uh, it, and so really it's about ensuring that peasant farmers can learn. We as graduates, with our experience on agroecology, on politics, on culture, we can then teach others. We can, uh, we can carry this banner and we carry it till the end. In the Yalas, the experience, it's been arduous work, it's been hard work, and as Marlene was saying, we have been working hard, and these three years have been incredibly fruitful for me, because the young people that are trained in the Yalas, they are reproducing they are replicating, they're carrying the struggle forward. They are peasant farmers, they're helping other peasant farmers, they're teaching others. There are some technicians who supposedly are 
uh, agroecological experts, but no, they sell themselves that way, but they are not really. So those of the, those of us who have graduated, we have training, we have ideologies. And so when we speak to uh, others, when we speak to peasant farmers, they understand me because I know how to speak to peasant farmers. Peasant farmers know how to speak to each other. And so they understand each other. So we already know how farmers work. We know, we understand peasants. We know their experiences. We understand their lives. And so we go to their farms. We transform not only the people, but we also help to transform the land. We transform the land so that peasant farmers feel satisfied uh, satis and this way we ensure that people eat better food based on agroecological production methods. So, for example, in one year in my area, we have uh, worked in more than five farms and they can't say that they are fully agroecological yet, but they are in transition and they have produced uh, four or five, they have four or five fields which are now agroecological. And so we we have been sowing in these fields and this is an experience that we learned from the Yalas. This is experience that we acquire at the Yala Institute. And you understand that what one companion does one thing, one companion does something else, but then we sit down together, we have dialogue, we discuss things and we share our knowledge. We share the knowledge that we all have. So when we share this knowledge, we feed each other. We all feed off one single idea. So if I teach something to my colleague, my friend, then he or she will teach me something in turn because we are a family, a family of love. And that is the best thing in a yellow. We are all one and we are one single family. We all arrive with the same idea. We have the same thinking. We have the same background, the same, we want to contribute in the same way. We hope to be able to bring about changes and we hope that we can do this in our countries. We hope that we can teach others to produce with agroecological methods. So in the Yala, you learn about everything in general. It's all many different experiences that we have. We uh, train each other on all of these methods. So we continue working, we have to continue supporting the Yalas. We have to ensure that people like us can continue working, can continue making their contribution and continue the struggle that Via Campesina promotes. So let us gather around this initiative. Let's carry this banner, this banner of struggle. Thank you very much. Glo let's globalize the struggle, globalize hope. Thank you. Very well said, Yorki. Thank you very much. Agroecology is completely political. It doesn't meet the structures of power, it doesn't comply with that or with the structures of monoculture. It really tries to develop power and calls the local communities to come to the center of production of food in harmony with mother nature. Agroecology, which is transformative and that emancipates and which is led by the peasant farmers. At the moment now, we're going to hear from one of our colleagues who's currently one of the students in one of the Iyalas, but there's one special thing about this one and it is that Yala allows you to transform and to adapt because we need to fight the struggle from each area of the land. And this colleague is still studying at Yala online and she will soon be able to attend the school, the university in person. And she is Marta Perez from El Salvador. Welcome, Marta. I'd like to send greetings to you, Blanca, and to all of my other colleagues. It's a pleasure to be a student at IALA. At the beginning, when I started the course, it was a real challenge for me because 
I had never before studied online. I didn't know what it was to use applications or platforms or anything like that. I didn't know anything about that. For me, it was a new role, a challenge in my life. And in terms of the knowledge, I said, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this because it's so complicated. You do get used to the traditional, but I can now say that this is something new and it's something that really opens the doors for those of us who are prepared to continue with the struggle. We're in organizations and we've had to do the work from our homes. We've had to implement new ways of working. And that's wonderful because despite this pandemic, we've not stayed there with our arms crossed. We've continued with our work, we've continued with our studying and, and with the different tasks we have to do in the home. And the most wonderful experience I've had it has been being a daughter of two farmers who have shown me so many things. They've shown me how to work the land. They've shown me how to remove the seeds and so many different things, but they haven't shown me that in the way that I've learned today with the teachers at Yala and with many colleagues. In fact, I'd like to share something with you. My mother always has a container full of seeds that she keeps. Since I began studying, I said, I have to be independent. I have to be independent for myself. I have to be independent for, from my family, from my organization, and not wait for other colleagues to give me things. If I have hands and I can do things for myself, then I will do that. And in this container, I can ha get many different bags where I have native seeds. And I've been growing these. And so we began to organize the different seeds and to work on the plots of land. And here I, I can show you seeds that I'm gathering. These are native seeds from the same crops that we have been working with. And this is a fantastic experience where I can tell so many colleagues about this experience. It's been a great experience, not just for me, but for everyone, because we all have to face great challenges in life. But this has really opened the doors for us. At the beginning, this was like a blank page for me when this year began, because I said, how am I going to be able to retain so much information? How am I going to get an idea of being this agroecologist when my teachers are in another country from me? but they've had so much patience with us. They've opened the doors for us. They've even answered us at midnight, which is something that I really admire. And this really motivates us to continue working here. And here we have seeds for fruit trees. I can show you so many different things. And I said, if I'm a student at Yella, which is an institution, which is, graduating so many different professionals, why then can I not make the most of this opportunity? So I would like to open up in my organization and, and really share the knowledge with that I've been learning with many different farmers and they're supporting me in return and that's fantastic, it's really wonderful and I don't know how to say thank you to all of my teachers because, my professors because perhaps People might say, no, I've lost this year. But then if we say, if we look for the ways to move forward and look for the alternatives and look for the positive side, and there have been many opportunities and it's been marvelous because I've learned ancestral knowledge. I've learned ideas from other colleagues and friends from other countries, things that were new to me. I was living in a kind of bubble I only knew what I had around me, but not now. Now I know so many different things about my country and about other countries, the countries of my colleagues, my classmates, the countries of my teachers as well. It has opened the doors for me to other areas. And I can say that I am really so happy that I am a student at Yala and that I can acquire so much knowledge and then implement that knowledge where I, where I live. 
it's something that I can't even put into words because at the beginning I didn't know how to explain what I knew because I did know some things but then when they began to give us that space, open up that space and to teach us their knowledge, it really had a huge impact because we are used to having five dollars going to the market buy the buy the fruit and then prepare that at home when we have a plot of land and we don't have anything so this has really motivated us to begin to work from home to begin to use our own resources they've shown us how to appreciate our Mother Earth and how to appreciate ourselves with food. They've shown us many topics that I admire and sometimes when you start to study a different course there are things that seem like you don't have enough time to study, topics that limit you, but here that's not the case. The the knowledge is vast and I admire that in the in the professors and I hope that one day I will get the opportunity, God will give me the opportunity to continue with these the steps that these professors are opening up for me and, and that I can reach very far. And it's been a real challenge at the beginning. Sometimes because of the low resources that you might have, you feel like you're not going to move forward. But God gives you strength and puts things in order so that you can follow the path. And that's the most wonderful aspect that we've been able to experience. So I'm really grateful to all of my professors. I have to say thank you and have to send my greetings to all of them. And I, I'm, it's been a real pleasure to be able to participate. Thank you very much and greetings to everyone. Thank you very much, Marta, that's really kind. Agroecology constitutes a social process, a cultural and political process, and it's a tool for collective transformation of reality. It's based on the exchange, on the cooperation, and the collective of the different com communities, the horizontal line between the different peasant communities and indigenous communities and the different scientific and technical knowledge. It's comprehensive, political, and above all, observes and respects Mother Nature. Many thanks to everyone. We're now waiting for your questions, for our speakers, for Marlene, the director of YALA, for Yorki Brito, one of the first of the cohort of YALA, and Marta Perez, the new student of YALA, who is going to who is studying this online and who will soon hope to join the school in person we hope do we have the questions There are no questions. You've said everything so clearly. Yeah, so clearly it seems. You can also go to the website so of YALA. You can visit our profile on Facebook. It appears as the Instituto Agroamericano, Agroecológico de Latinoamérica. Are there any questions? We have a question for Marlene. Marlene, what an interesting story. Do you know about Severine VT Fleming? Do you know that if Severine VT Fleming from the United States knows about what you've been doing? So I repeat this again for Marlene, what an interesting story. Does Severine VT Fleming from the United States from the session beforehand know about what you have done? Didn't 
Bolsonaro in Brazil try to close the school? That's the question for Marlene Sanchez. Well, Blanca, I'd like to just clarify that our school has had different experiences in Latin America and Brazil. Uh, Yala is one of the countries in which uh, our colleagues are developing the Yala and they still have other processes of political and ideological training there as well. And yes, that's right. Our Brazilian colleagues there who are coordinating these spaces did have problems, did face problems in relation to the to, in relation to Bolsonaro's government and they are being attacked there in terms of the activities that they're carrying out because it is very much going against what the government there wants. So the government has tried to pose a threat to the Yala there and it has affected them and also violated this, the spaces, these educational spaces there in Brazil. Yes, of course. And for Yorkie, how do you understand technology in a different sense to the dominant model via which social relations? I'll repeat the question. Could you repeat the question? Yeah. How do you understand technology as something different to the dominant model? And for what social relations? Did you leave your key? Okay then, for Marta, we have another question. Yes, saving the seeds is fundamental. It's extremely fortifying. Bravo, this is really incredible. Are there any similar programs in other parts of the world, Marta? Well, here in El Salvador, we do this through our associations more than anything. In the case of my town, nobody has promoted that. In fact, we have 170 farmer members and I'm working with them. And it's because I took the initiative of beginning to promote this collection of native seeds. And that's how we're working with that. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to start composting because we're starting a project with all of our associates. We're talking about 170 farmers. This is a fairly large plantation where we're going to sow tomato seeds among other kinds of vegetables like radish. We're going to also be sowing carrots and so many different varieties of vegetables. This more than anything helps to bring it closer to them because they help to share this knowledge they share the knowledge that they have and I help them by sharing the seeds that I have. So it's a win-win situation. We work together. We, so, yeah, it would be very interesting as well if Marlon could clarify whether there are any similar programs in other parts of the world, like ours, like our Yala project. Well, yeah, in Latin America, we have nine. I also mentioned the countries and in other parts of the world, in other continents, our experience in Latin America, which has been the one that has been, had been, had, had, has advanced the most, we exchange with other regions that form part of La Via Campesina, other organizations in La Via Campesina, and they are already starting their own processes for agroecological schools. For example, in India, we had an experience there with an agroecological school in Africa as well and in Europe. And the truth is that the different countries and the continents have been implementing their own experiences for agroecological training based on what we've contributed and what we've shared with them in terms of the training we offer. Yorki, you're not going to get out of this one. Okay. Did you hear the question? Yeah, the technology. So on this topic of technology, we see technology as something that 
it's not really something that we need, so to speak. Why? Well, because we take that technology, we transform that technology into agroecology. I'm not sure if I'm like, making it myself clear. We use animals. Somebody might use fer chemical fertilizers, but we use organic fertilizers. So we are transforming all that technology to the agroecological system and we give life to that, but without using any chemicals. So there we can put this debate on the table, What, which is the better option of the two, when you have to buy a sack of fertilizers, which is a chemical one, or do you make your own fertilizer with the waste from your home? And is it better than what they're selling to you? So in agroecology, this is something that we seek, we want this transformation, we want this kind of engineering. Yeah, as a peasant movement, recently we've had seven research studies and we've seen that we want to reach food sovereignty, but we could also reach technological sovereignty. And this is something that would be good to look into and see whether within agroecology we can make the most of some technology. One item would be this online model that we've been making the most of now given the situation that we're living in we have to use and make the most of technology to communicate and to connect with one another another question is how do you hope to distribute agro agroecology across the world this is a similar one this would be for marlin as well Well, we said that the experience of La Via Campesina, which has been working for 30 years now as an organization and has been working on mobilization and on advocacy and on creating alliances. And this has been the tool for the peasant communities, which is making it possible to spread this agroecology agro in the hands of the peasant farmers. as a social movement based on all these processes developed by the school, for example, we said that we should train young people for this kind of alternative agriculture to agribusiness. But these young people not only remain there as a technician or as an engineer or who knows, or as a technologist, but instead these young people are going to replicate the process. And this is also part of the methodology of peasant to peasant, where these young people get to the countryside. And first of all, it's a huge challenge because at the moment, nowadays, young people don't think very much about the countryside and the rural areas. And so the first thing that we want to achieve is for young people to come back to the countryside they train at the Yala, they go back to the countryside, and once they've completed the training there, they have other tools to facilitate the process too, to replicate the, the processes in their own community. So these technologies that they have learned using different techniques and new methods, because it's important to understand the dialogue between this, the technical and between the ancestral and the empirical, but the training that they have it's also important to see how they can replicate it in their communities or in their organizations. And the organizations are fundamental for us in these processes of sharing the knowledge about agroecology. We are simply a tool. The YALAs are a tool that are going to enable to mass distribute these processes in the territory. But we as technicians who we're, we're we're technicians who teach, but we're also there to show that through these processes, young people can also replicate these same processes in their own communities, teach other young people, and so on. And then we can promote agroecology in more families. And that training then remains within these, the young people within their childhoods, because it's important that it starts there. So we go one by one, but it starts with the families, with our children, with our communities. And we are not so much the magic wand that's going to change everything. It's really a process. And we're talking about 
projects, not so much an economic short-term project, but it's an organizational project, a, a life project. And that's what we do in the Yellas. And this is something that we have to keep sharing, distributing progressively with everyone, even with the consumers, with the rural workers, and not just with peasant farmers, but with all social sectors that form part of our society. Thank you very much. In the Spanish YouTube channel, we're being asked about your ancestral ancestral ideas and how do you feel being part of La Via Campesina, Marta, Yorkie? Marta, how do you feel being an agroecologist of La Via Campesina, such a huge movement and revolutionary movement? and globalized movement. I really, I really feel it's a huge privilege as a, a unique human being, I could say, because this opportunity is one that not everyone has. Few people have this opportunity. There are few people who are prepared to follow such a process because it's a process of struggle, it's a constant struggle. It's not just about going to study and going to learn and for that knowledge to remain in my mind. At some point, you also have to learn for yourself. And when you do that, when you decide to study a course and to study something, it's because all of that knowledge that you're going to acquire, you're going to share it, not just with one person, but with many, whether they're from your so your area, your local area, your country, or from any other country. And for me, that is marvelous. And in terms of gender equality, I think that men and women have the same skills, the same abilities, and so we can both do the work. That's what I can say. So, Jorge, how do you feel as an agroecologist in La Via Campesina? It's a real privilege, above all, to belong to La Via Campesina and to belong to this organization that has fought so much, that has fought so much to change the lifestyles of so many people and to transform people's lifestyles through agroecology, to transform it as well politically and the support that they have given to all of the peasant community. I feel proud to be part of La Villa Campesina. And even more so with the Yalas. For me, it's the best thing that's happened to me. And I have to say thank you. Thank you for the support given to young people and to La Via Campesina for always supporting young people. It's a real privilege. Thank you, Yorki. The last question, just quickly. How is gender equality worked on in the Yalas? Marta. Gender equality in the Yalas, I've, I've seen that being taught very well because both men and women feel like we are equal because we're a family. When I've not been able to do something because I haven't understood it, my colleagues are there and my male colleague might say to me, this is how you do it. So this is how you can try it again. So I feel that in, in the Yalas, there's no difference between men and women. There's we're all equal there. And I can say that I am really happy to be a student at Yala because I felt truly privileged. And I can say that without a doubt. If tomorrow I decided to go there, I know that my colleagues are going to look after me, they're going to respect me and support me. And that's what I admire most about the Yalas. And they've shown us so many things, so many things about socialism and about sharing with others and the 
policies as well. It's it's fantastic. What else can I say? It's really wonderful. Great. Well, thank you very much for participating and for flying the flag of Yella. And I wish that you can study more and to keep fighting for agroecology and for the revolution. So one, two, three. Study, struggle, and organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you and greetings to everyone, greetings to the staff, thank you very much.